this linearity of your perception totally establishes what you believe is real and what you believe is not. And if you can't see it, then it doesn't exist. If you cannot see it, you cannot even talk about it. Even though you have invisible forces around you that you can take that you take for granted, like magnetics and gravity, you can't go past that. Both of those are provable at the see it level, for you can see the effect of them clearly every day. But if you can't see what others see, the colors of the energy around things, and it's foolish. Therefore, there are those who say, I choose to be linear here. Some here are not just like that, it's comfortable, and you are used to it. But it's a biased linearity, and you don't even know it. Your survival depends on you being in a linear world, so very early on. Your brain was trained not to let you see anything that would not suit your linear existence. Therefore, you have a biased reality. Even though your actual physical eyes may see colors, your brain denies you the visible. It does not suit your linear reality. Every single human in this place is so linear and so used to it that none of you realize how reality crippled you are. As three-dimensional, linear human beings, you show up for a seven-hour conference where each speaker has to deliver the message to you one word at a time. And your, your brain, brain must listen, listen one word at a time. time. It's like your entire reality is on this small, little, little thin track as you move only forward, forward ever back, or up or down, or left or right, right, only forward. forward. It's, it's a, a thin, thin string, string that you balance on, and everything around you works that way. way. But you're but used, used to it, so it doesn't seem limiting. When you, you get a book, you read it in a linear fashion, one word at a time. Even those of you who are speed readers are reading one page at a time. It's still, it's still linear, linear. one after the, the other. other. You are you reality, reality crippled, crippled and don't even know it. it. If you had quantum, quantum reality, reality as we do, we do you, you would see successfully everything at once. You, you could see the entire possibility of potential scenario, scenario and the message is all one out of the area. You could come into a room like this and receive the whole day's message in a few seconds, as though you would listen all day in a linear fashion. You could take books and read them by touching them and holding them for a moment. This is one who can move up, up, down, left, right, forward, and back in reality. I can't imagine. You saw an example of this today. In general, a true interdimensional human existence is very rare. You're in 3D for a reason. Since this is the energy you develop, you have control of your own reality and the perception you have of the whole. So you sit in what you have created, your life is lived in 3D, and you walk away from this place one step at a time in 3D. Therefore, when we speak of the esoteric things, there is little justification or proof, for it does not justify itself in 3D. But for those of you who wish to cross the bridge of reality tonight, I wish to talk about the most esoteric things in your belief system, and we will touch on many of them. There would, there would seem, seem to be no science behind, behind these things, things. That's, that's only, only because, because your idea of science is based totally on the 3D. As you, you begin to reach out on the 3D body, something your science will need to justify the esoteric. For then, the theories and the postulations and rules will be interdimensionally based, such as the way out of it. Today's foolishness is, therefore, tomorrow's science. And it's been this way as long as you have been human. Wouldn't it Wouldn't be, be fun, fun to place you in a time machine where you could, you could explain, explain to your ancestors how you can talk to anyone on Earth with a little device in your hand, hand or throw, throw pictures through the air up in space and have them received again, again almost anywhere on Earth? Earth. Good luck with this. this. But you, but you would get, get far, far before they, they want to stone you, burn you, or at least ignore you from being one of them, the weird ones who could sort with the devil. See any of these in your culture? And then there are those who say, I don't believe in anything unless I can see it. And so let us address this issue first, for it is so very common with so many of you. I must see it, they say. In addition, Mr. New Age, don't talk about odd things in ether. Don't talk about intuitive movement, which you call kinesiology. Don't talk about numerology. Don't talk about astrology. And don't talk about past lives to me. Don't talk about Lemurians and the Mama to me. I can't, I can't see them because they don't, they don't exist. exist. It's all, all fairy, fairy talk. talk. Invisible it's things that exist all around you and you take them for granted. But they're, they're part, part of your reality in 3D. 3D. Somehow you've justified these, haven't you? Air is too small to see, but the microscope shows it. Uh-huh. 
Therefore, it's not reprehensible, you say. Love is an emotion that's felt, not seen. That's okay. Since you can experience it. Gravity and magnetism are so big you can see the results of them constantly. So they're okay, too, in a 3D mind. So the 3D mind will seem to allow anything that a vice can measure, but the body can feel as real. But I'm speaking of something that you are going to have to reach out for, since it can only be seen in experience with spiritual intent, changing the 3D rules a bit. Therefore, the unseen things I speak of can only be experienced by changing your reality. Something you have permission to do. If you can suspend your 3D bias for just a moment, you can cross that bridge with me into a quantum state, just for a moment. This is the beginning of the softening of the false reality box you are in. Moving to the allowance of things unseen to be part of your possibility. How would you feel if someday a device was able to see interdimensional energy? Would that be fairy talk, or would that be okay? You will actually have that decision to make sure that you think. Truth is the big misunderstanding. One of the most difficult things to speak about to a biased 3D mind, and what would really expose the linearity of your thinking, is one of the most basic things you deal with. What is truth? Oh good, Brian's going to tell us what truth is. Yes, I am. You are right, and you're not going to like it, for it's not a 3D. Truth, Truth is the, is the attribute of when the human, the human heart marries, marries the love of God, God and the result are the, are the passion for the spiritual path that enhances to that human. Some, Some of you have had this experience, and you know your truth, truth don't, don't you? And you will and often say, say this, this is my, my truth. truth. But, but how, how do you feel, feel when it isn't someone, someone else's truth? truth? They, may they may have theirs as well, well unlike like yours. yours. But it but may be just as passionate for their marriage their love of God. What, what they, they see in their potentials and what they do, do the actions which they have, the integrity which they hold for spirit, spirit, the direction they go in, may be very, very different from yours. How do you, How do you feel, feel about, about that? that? Are they are wrong? wrong? Crying, are you, are you about, about to tell us that, that there are many truths? truths. Yes, yes, but more than that, indeed, there are many truths. But the human brain, biased in singularity, yells, there's got to be only one truth. This is, this is something, something that, is that is at the core of all spirituality, one, one truth. truth. There, there cannot, cannot be many. many. We are, we are all, all looking for the one truth. truth. It's, it's responsible, responsible for all the religions on the planet and, and most, most of the wars. Of the wars. It, it is, is the commensurate, commensurate search for God. For God. And I, I say, say, how 3D of you? you. What, if what if there were multiple realities of truth that all led to the same place? Would you be okay with that? For that is the way that it works. If you really need the one singularity of truth, I will give it to you. You are all connected. How do you like that? But think about it. Do all the parts of each earthly machine know the whole picture? Do they know why they exist? A lot of people in your world, they don't. What if you were all parts of a giant truth machine, all working together for the purpose you didn't really understand? I'm telling you, these truth connections are like spokes of a huff of wheel. There are there trillions are of them, and they, they all lead to the center, center and they are and all called, called truth. truth. Well, well, some will say, say I, don't I don't like, like that. that. You don't you like it since it doesn't fit you in your box. box. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about food. food. The sustenance of life is food. food. The sustenance of your spiritual growth is your truth. truth. It is your it's passion. Your passion. What are you what going, going to do based, based upon the truth that you have that is the marriage of you and your higher self? What are you going to do in life? life? Whatever, Whatever you then do, do is your truth, truth and it's known only, only not to you. you. It's, it's personal. personal. But it's, it's a linearity of human existence that then wishes to generalize it. Paste it upon a bunch of humans and call it a dot doctrine. Put it in one box and you feel better about it, don't you? It's, it's far, far easier when you have an authority outside yourself to tell you what your truth is, is then it's not your responsibility. If I told you there was only one kind of food, what would you say? Oh, you wouldn't like that anyway, would you? What, what if the giant food, food angels, angels came down and said, stop, stop this? this. You're all You're going to have to stop eating, eating what you're eating and change, change because, because there's only one food. food. You'd say, yeah, no, that doesn't work. That's ridiculous. That's that's ridiculous. That's that's ridiculous. And I'm, I'm saying, saying to you, you it's the same kind of attribute when it comes to spiritual truth. truth. Spiritual sustenance is individual and unique. The search for truth is not the search for one thing that all of them participate in. That is that a very 3D, 3D biased, biased singular thought. So here's what I'm saying.
what you've got to look at. I have told you that there's truth for every human being in the room. One that is isolated, separate, and unique. Yet there is quantum effect here. When you get together, somehow those truths meld together one purpose, don't they? There is a commonality within your intuition of the face of God. There's a commonality in where the truth of the day is manifest in front of you. And those who experience it are okay with that, for they see the bigger picture. So the interesting thing is that although you come here as an individual seeking unique truth, together you are seeking one goal. Because in the higher connection between the two, there is a synchronicity, and that is a love of God. The higher self you have, that esoteric thing you cannot see, seems to be the glue that makes the quantum effect work, seems to straighten it all out. There is your singularity. Intelligence sounds. Let us talk about intuitive motion. Modern medicine does not like this. That there are light workers using their own bodies to test the chemicals in the food that they should put in them. You call it kinesiology, muscle testing. Somehow, somewhere, your body is supposed to know beyond what your brain or your intellect knows of what's good for you and what's bad for you. Therefore, you see many light workers walking around doing these kinds of testing on their body. And it looks odd to those who don't share the belief. Too weird to say. That's the silliest thing I've ever seen. What are those people doing? Let's put it into perspective. Will you cross this esoteric bridge with me? What's your biology designed to do? My partner, I want you to go slow on this one. What if you have a disease in your body? Let's pretend it was something like a cancer that's present right now. Oh, intellectual one whose brain is at the top of the evolutionary ladder. Why is it you don't know it? What if your brain alerts you? Aren't you tuned into the cellular structure of every cell? Shouldn't your brain be getting the message that something is growing inside you that's not only inappropriate, but that might even cause you death? Every system in your body is wired up to talk to your brain, so why don't you know it? I will tell you, you evolved this way. For your body is about survival, and it's always in survival mode. First, if there were a neural protocol to inform you every time your body's antibodies went into action, you would be in constant anxiety, very bad for survival. No, no, you're, you're kept, kept from, from it. It's a total, total and complete plot. plot. You could be carrying it around with you and you discovered it accidentally too late. late. Doesn't, Doesn't seem right, right, does it? However, you are designed to have a consciousness where the, where the brain, brain believes, believes that the body's body defenses are good enough to take care of anything. anything. So it doesn't, it doesn't bother you the details. details. But your cellular structure knows all about it. Wouldn't you think? Every cell knows what's going on. So you have then a subconscious system that is working these things. Perhaps for months there's been a battle every day within the cells. Yet you walk around having no idea. So a system exists that takes the innate knowledge of what is going on in your cellular structure and communicates it to you. It's out of the intellectual loop. Very difficult to believe for logical thinkers, and it's called kinesiology. Try it. Your body will give you information if you ask it in ways that go around the intellect. It is very real. It is practiced by many. So there, so there is a reality, reality record. record. It is also, it's also the same, same process used, used for what you have called the pendulum. pendulum. Your fingers you grasp the pendulum, pendulum on the end of the machine of the string. In which, in which direction, direction it goes helps you decide what to what do for yourself. yourself. Yet many you see this from screaming the other way. way. You, you must be part, part of some evil cult, they say. Some of the other side in which you are doing the mythology. You are using the energy of the devil, they say. You are using the pendulum to gasp. What is going on with the process of the pendulum is simply mini kinesiology. It is literally that muscles will think that beyond your ability to control them, responding to a question is about cellular structure. As you try to hold your fingers very still, the muscles will move to give you a message, swinging the pendulum one way or the other. It's in an intelligence trying to go around your intellect so your muscles and it works. What would you think of a medical doctor whipping out his pendulum for answers every time you wanted to know dosages? Well, some do. What is that guy here? Use, Use this process, process if you wish to find out what's going on in your body, what's best, best for you, what kind of food are you allergic to. to. All of these things your body knows, but, but the intellect is in survival. survival. In the 3D, 3D box, box it won't tell you anything. anything. Astrology. astrology. Let's, Let's move, move to another, another one. Astrology. astrology. Unfortunately, I cannot talk to you about astrology tonight because it's not necessary. It is extremely scientific. 
It's the oldest science on the planet, so I'll postpone the astrology until later. I will give you the physics of it, how it works, and why it works. Perhaps I'll take the magic right out of it, and some of you might not like that. For many love the mysticism of it all. The definition of mysticism is the unexplained science of God. Numerology, an energy system. I wish, I wish to approach a subject, subject that is so, so difficult, difficult and which to find esoteric. The 3D, the 3D part, part of me must suspend itself completely for this explanation to even come close to me to be If I'm going to tell you how numerology works, I'm going to have to tell you about the other side of the veil. I'm going to have to tell you about an interdimensional state of quantumness that represents the way things work for you, but that you are unaware of. In this string of reality that you're on, which is linear, a time frame that is so limited that you cannot stop the clock. It keeps going no matter what. You cannot reverse it. It only goes in one direction, and you're always moving. You can't stop. You can't go forward at another speed or backward at all. What a limitation. Imagine now going to a place where there is no time at all, where reality can move in all directions at once. There is a tremendous amount of confusion for you because everything looks random. Instead of an orderly, sinking through the reality, it looks like chaos. What you, what you are seeing is every potential possible for you and your neighbor and everyone on the planet, planet all together in one place. place. There's, There's no, no timeline time put upon any of them. Therefore, Therefore not, not only are the potentials there of what you might do after you leave this meeting, meeting but the potential of what you used to do and what you call the past. All the potentials that were there that you missed and did not do, all together in one place. Can you, Can you imagine, imagine something that's so chaotic? chaotic. So you so sit and you look at this and it looks so confusing and disorganized and all you say is, get, get me back, back to that linear, linear string, string where it is so simple. simple. This, this is, is a quantum, quantum state and you, as you, as you cross, cross the bridge from three to even marginally into that quantum, quantum state, looks chaotic, chaotic, incredibly chaotic, chaotic because there are no visible rules. There's no system, apparently, because the things you see don't follow what you'd expect in 3D. They're not simple or singular or organized in a way you can figure out. So you say, get me out of here. This is similar to the situation where you have sightless humans from birth who are suddenly able to have limited sight through your new scientific discoveries. But when they receive it, they say, cover my eyes. It's just too different from the simplicity of what I'm used to. So it is with the 3D individual when they go across the veil, it looks like yes. It is, but it isn't what they are used to. Even your best scientists had difficulty in the early days of quantum physics. They saw the apparent disorganization and randomness that affected. They shot at phrases like, my God cannot be chaotic God. I will not be part of a system that is chaotic. It's not the way the universe works. There must be a system. There must be a plan. There have to be laws, no chaos. And they're right. For now we say to you that what appears to be 3D confusion is quantum organization. There actually is a system, and it has to do with vibration and energy. In this system, anything that vibrates at any frequency in an interdimensional way sets up potentials that are marked for their vibratory rate. This is very difficult to explain. They then become marked potentials. These represent potentials that are most likely to manifest into 3D reality because there is a unique vibration around them as opposed to ones that do not vibrate. In addition, there, there are strings, strings of vibration that are beautiful, that are, beautiful, that are always between all of the potentials. There are, there are strings, strings between, between what appears to be the chaos between one person, person and another, how they act, what, what they do. do. You call you this call coincidence, coincidence, but a light like who calls it synchronicity. Whatever you call it, it represents a system with rules, rules but, but ones that don't conform to 3D. Many say there are no accidents. This statement infuriates logical thinkers who then say, that is the silliest thing I've ever heard. heard. There are no there are accidents. accidents? Of course, of course there, are there are accidents. No, there are no accidents. They, they are manifestations of potentials into reality based upon the vibration of the quantum attributes, and it links to what you call co-creation. It isn't necessary that you call planning, but there, there is organization involved. It's a beautiful system. Look, look, what brought you here? Are you having an epiphany? Is there something going on here, energy here? Well, there is. I know who's here. here. And you and think that's an accident. accident. What, what brought, brought you to a chair in front of me? What brought, what brought your eyes to this page, page or your ears to this hearing? hearing. That's, that's what, what I'm talking, talking about. That's not an accident. accident. There's a system going on, and you are part of it. Everything, 
every time you see a 11, 11 on a clock, you say, oh, what a coincidence. Or perhaps you know that the energy of the number 11 is within numerology. It is enlightenment and illumination. Two number ones together, each one meaning new beginning. Together, a master number happens that represents enlightenment and illumination. And why is it shown you so often? It's a sign of the age. It is the number of the age. Numerology is a vibration. And when you look at its significance and you see what the numbers may mean in your life, pay attention. The system creates this and numerology fits in perfectly to a system of vibration. Crossing the bread right and pay attention to that tarot spread, which some of you said the work of the devil. You lay cards out and somehow they're going to tell you what to do. Isn't that fortune telling? No, that's not what it is. Tarot has nothing to do with telling you the future. Listen, listen, if you're, you're only hearing, hearing this for the first time, time let, me, let, me, uh, let me tell you what this is. is. The tarot, tarot spread, spread is a beautiful, beautiful intuitive way of straightening out the chaos, chaos for a moment. moment. Just for a for moment, moment, so you so may see, see some, some of the things, things in your life through this system that help you understand your energy better. better. Again, it shows you what the intellect does not know, for it reveals the energy of vibration within the system that we're talking about. What a beautiful system this is. Esoteric, take it or leave it. Numerology has been around a long time. After all, it's not the new age. It's quite old. Could it be that the ancients knew something that you're just now rediscovering? Could it be they knew about the numbers and they were using them all along? There are those who say, using numerology, you must be having something brewing for September this year. For this is the year of 2007, and September is nine also. What is it? The nine-year vibration of 2007 represents the end. Completion, a rock 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 next to it is the next year, 2008, which is a 1. 2008 equals 10, equals 1. This represents starting over a singularity and new beginnings. Every nine years it occurs. You have a 9 and a 1. That's just math. But who has put together the nine-year cycle? Draw the numbers together and see what has happened within them, or the potential around them. Let me just give you a hint. The last, the last time it happened, nine years cycle, you were, you were within, within one year of the prediction of the Armageddon, Armageddon that you did not experience. Did you, did you notice, notice this? There's, there's always, always a potential for a shift to complete one, one thing and start another. another. And here you, you are, are in the nine, nine year again. again. You, you might, might say, but on a nine and seven, seven that's got to be something that's going to happen, right? right. There, there are several dates within that month that will also be a nine vibration. For instance, the 18th or perhaps 27th. So crime, what's, what's going to happen on one of these days? days. I will I tell you what's going to happen. happen. Yet, Yet that day, some of you may be tuned into the esoteric, and some, and some of you may be simply walking along and not caring. But I will, but I will tell, tell you what's going to happen. happen. That is that a day all over the earth, which day, whichever day it is, it will be celebrated. It is a day of tremendous celebration of shift. Don't fear these things. Numerology tells you what the intellect does not tell you. So in this case, it gives you hints about your own earth. About your track and what you're doing. Why don't, Why don't you take that day and get together with a group? group? Why don't you take that day and celebrate the fact that you are heading toward 2012? Just like your mind said, it is a time of enlightenment, a vibrational pattern that they saw repeat over thousands of years when the vibration of the planet went up and down. That's what they were doing in their observations. They looked at the sun and they looked at the moon. They were computing the esoterics. The vibrational shift of the earth is what they were plotting, and they did. In this ninth year, in the ninth month of a ninth vibration day, take time and say, Thank you, Spirit, that I am here, that I'm alive, and I can make a change on this planet and myself, and my health and love my family. Thank you that I can be a lighthouse for this time. This was not the original plan when they were growing up, you know. Something changed. Just go take a look at the prophecies of Nostradamus. They are no longer valid anymore, not really. Not really. really. You change and shift, shift, shift turn to corner. corner. That's, That's numerology on an energy system. system. Past, past lives. lives. Oh, the oh, big one, many say. How, how could anyone be so foolish to believe in past lives? lives? There's, There's absolutely, absolutely no evidence. How, how can you hang on to such a premise of past lives? lives? You, you will not hear proof of past lives from this chair. There never will be any kind of absolute empirical evidence. There will be much circumstantial and experiential evidence around it, but never anything to actually prove it. You either have the confirmation intuitively and the knowledge there or not. But we ask you, 
What is it that has guided your personality so that you will come in so different from your sister, from your brother, from the same parent? What made you so unique? What gave you the phobias that nobody expected you would have? We had no life experience to create them. What made you want to do certain things? Why has the artist become the artist? Is this is all random. Did the variety of biology give you all that a science tells you, or could there be a system? In the quantum of the potential that I have described, is it possible that you have lived before? Well, the answer is that you have. The answer is many times. The answer is that those who have come to a gathering like this are very aware of that. Old souls come together to learn these esoteric things. Old souls are attracted to these intuitive things. Old souls are in your room. So the belief comes to those who look for their truth, for it is part of the study of your divinity. It is foolish talk to those who don't care, those who are intellectually bound in their 3D bonds. I'll give you some information about past lives that maybe you have not heard before, but that you need to know. For this is the least understood part of our human being. First know this, it does not serve your magnificence to know who you have been or what you have done. It gets in the way of your life lesson. It really does. It is a distraction, so therefore, it is well concealed and well hidden. And there's a purpose for this. I will give you a number of facts, and I will tell you that these things are precious, precious information. This is the time for esoteric rules or doctrinal studies. There are precious things that show you how much you are loved within the system. There's a system here. Everything you have learned spiritually in any lifetime on this planet is collected. It is stored in a place that goes right into your DNA in an esoteric level, in an interdimensional state when you are born. You pick it up again, whether you use it or not, and you never have to go back and learn things again. Everything that you have learned in any lifetime sticks and sticks in the next lifetime. Did you know that? And all you have to do is to open the jar of lifetime experience with your own free spiritual choice. And how course it with the ages. The very teachers that you see walk the stage this weekend have done this before. They lived it before and they're comfortable with it. It's not a product of a few years on earth, it's a product of millennium. That's the truth and you should be able to feel this different one. Let me give you another precious fact. You have a friend who's been with you on every journey. And you don't even know it. This thing you call the higher self, which you can't really even define, is a multi-dimensional piece of you, a piece of God. It is an interdimensional part of the system, is what it is. It's part of the apparent chaos, and it is something that has a commonality to every single past life that you've had. You see, you come in with the same higher self every single time. It's part of what you call your soul. And it's the same higher self. Think about that for a moment. What does this mean? There's more. Since your higher self and your past life experience are both in what you call a quantum state or interdimensional, then here is the question. Is it really a past life when there is no time? How can you have used the word past? If it's not a past life, then what is it? It's a current life, isn't it? Everything you have learned is an accumulation of who you are as you walk this planet. Wise old soul, you may not feel like you're filled with wisdom, but some of you know what I'm speaking of, and you are, indeed, filled with knowledge. You have the street smarts of the universe, and you know it. It's intuitive, isn't it? You can't quite touch it, but you know it's the truth. This higher self knows every single human being you've been in. And it's not in a row or stacked up a linear list. It's all mixed into a bowl together. And it's on your lap. And what we have taught before is this. Those of you who wish you can reach into the bowl and take the best part of any one of those lives and apply it to your current life. For that's why they're here, dear human beings. It's part of the system. They're not past at all. Blessed is the human who reaches into the Akash and picks up some wisdom. Who picks up the teacher, the passion of the love of God, the priest, the non shaman it's all there. It's part of the system that you would recognize your truth, for now you know why it's so unique. For it involves the ages of your being here. Those are the facts of the past life. Well, crying, I believe in past lives, I believe in kinesiology, I believe in numerology, for I see the work. All of the things are okay with me, but I'm having a real hard time with these laborians in the mouth. All right, I want.
want you to put this together with me. I want you to suspend belief for a moment and cross this bridge with me. Most of humanity say that God is eternal. Whatever God means to you, source, spirit, or intelligent creator, creator of the universe, intelligent design, most feel it as eternal. God always was and God always will be. God can be many places at the same time. Everyone knows that. God could be having a conversation with you right now and also with another, another person. Perhaps even one in the past. Who must God be who could do that? Well, obviously, if God is in a quantum state, it must be that way. Think of it. At some level, God is being every soul who is passing over right now. Every minute of the day, God is greeting all the newborns. Every minute, every place on the planet. What a God. Everywhere, all the same time, ageless and without any time. God is in the potential future, the past, and is here now. But would you even dare apply these attributes to a creature who lives or used to live on this planet? You say, no, 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 that's silly. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's blasphemous. Some of you are starting to get where I'm going with this. Human beings who learn to put themselves into a quantum state are human beings who become timeless. You do this when you meditate, don't you feel it? it? Did you know that my partner's body clock stops when he channels? We have spoken about this before. When you step across the veil, you suspend your 3D linearity. The Lemurians did this, but physically. They had those DNA layers that allowed them to understand a quantum state. So they had a lot of practice with the wisdom of the how-tos regarding it all. The reason they did it so that they could put themselves on a time capsule of vibratory change. If this earth ever made it past the challenge of the Armageddon, which it did, and move into the promise of 2012, which we are doing, the time capsule would open up and spill its wisdom onto this planet. They were able to do this because they have God in their DNA, just like you do. Not too spooky now, is it? Think about this. Who were they? They're just like you. They are, they are partners, partners in this new age. They are, they are in love, love with humanity. With humanity. So, so much so that they saw something coming, coming that would curtail their race. race. The retreat of the ice age that they, they were in 50,000 years ago allowed, allowed the water to cover their lands. lands. And they, and they put, put themselves in this interdimensional state. state. You, you say, say well, well, they waited a long time. No, they didn't. Ask them. To them, it's just like they had lunch yesterday in Lemuria. It's a timeless state where they are in the seconds to go clock. All they did was cross the street and here you are. So what is it about the mountain? Indeed, it's simple. It is the collection point that they choose. It's only a collection point. One from which they stage the hell for those who come forward. Every time I've sat on a stage with my partner in this magic place, I have reminded him of this, and I'll say it again. There is an invitation to take a little Marine home with you. These are simply humans who have lived before in ancient, ancient times, who had high technology, quantum consciousness, in their cellular structure. They were in a quantum state of the elements of the planet. Is this so far-fetched? What is it you know about your own indigenous? Lemurians knew more about the planets, about biology, about DNA, about magnetics. Now they are stepping forward as helpers to those of you who wish to start this interdimensional journey. It's part of the system. Finally, we close. Crying, I'm having a hard time with God. Where is God? We want God to come down and straighten up this planet. Oh, I want peace so much with what is in the news. Is there really a God? What evidence is there? Well, go ask your astronomer and put energy and potential together. They're scratching their heads right now. What is intelligent design? They won't say that God on it, but they'll say everything else. There's a system they'll say. Maybe it's not as random as we thought they'll say. They are they're using it, but they can't define it. it. But you but know it's intelligent, and that again, all odds are created on us. us. You know you what the human does as soon as he is old enough. enough. He searches for the creator. creator. Did you know, you know that? that? It's, it's almost, almost like an indictment that something's going on in your DNA, DNA, DNA and asks you, ask you to find God. God. When more than 85% of the planet has a religion that believes in the fact that the soul is eternal, you have to look at why this would be. Some, Some of them, them want, want to put God, God into a building. building. They're, They're happy, happy just to know that he's, he's there, there so they can visit more church. church. And the rest, the rest of, you? of you? You want you to want find it inside because, because you have eons of experience, of experience yelling, yelling to you, you and that it's there, there to find. find. You, want you want to know if God, God is real. real. Do you, you have, have the courage alone to 
to sit down and say, Dear God, I want to know if you are here or not. In here and again, I ask you to show me. Do you have the courage to do that? That's the night when you don't get any sleep, because that's when the angels that have been standing next to you your whole lifetime start to have a party. You are giving permission for healing to proceed, to become partly interdimensional, to visit a quantum state, to live longer and be more peaceful, and to create peace in your land. You will begin to move in ways that you cannot even believe are possible through a quantum intelligence that literally carries your thoughts and your prayers to where they should go. You become a partner with God, and it is you who carries the light that you are pleading with God to carry to those who need it so much. You see, it's part of a system that so many have said is chaotic, but it's not. Oh, it's beautiful, it's loving. You can, you can see, see the strings the and they vibrate, vibrate all with purpose, purpose not chaotic. chaotic. And, and with intent, intent, you can you control, control them, them. Creating your, your own truth, creating your own reality, reality. creating create a life very, very different, different than the one you thought you had. had. That's, That's the esoteric. That's, That's the message of Tomorrow, Tomorrow we'll talk about physics. physics. Tonight we'll talk about the love of God. And that is my message to this clear channel who sits in a chair before you. We're not leaving the building of night, you know. You are. When you when come you back, back tomorrow, tomorrow, we're all still, still right, right here. here. And so, and so it, is. it is. The Light Lookers Handbook, Lesson 4. And so it is. Greetings, dear one. I am crying up in the